www.newtoboss.com. This is again Ty, and in this video tutorial, I'd like to share to you how you can create an HQ or an HD wallpaper. Uh, the reason why you would want to do that, if you love wallpapers and uh, you might want to create your own, you have to consider that devices right now they're are actually trying to make use of a 1920 by 1080 full HD but thinking of the Nexus 10 maybe uh, in the coming days it would be more than that for resolution but for now we stick to the primary HD which is 1920 by 1080 All right so bring up your Photoshop right here we're using CS5 control new for a new file then set the width to 1920 and height should be 1080 All right. We got a secondary HD which is 1280 by 720. But if you'd want to make a wallpaper, you might want to consider creating a wallpaper with the maximum highest resolution that there is possibly. Uh, I mean, that's possible. So 1920 and I mean by 1080 is the highest for now. If you'd want to use that for. Uh, a 1280 secondary HD you can just resize the photo you can just size it down then you don't lose quality but if you're gonna start off with a little smaller quality photo smaller resolution blow it up to a larger then you're gonna be having a bit of a problem so again start off with 1920 by 1080 you can resize that a little bit later then try to type in something that says HQ um, wallpaper it got 300 for the resolution. I uh, guess can you set that at 72? That'll be alright. And uh, color mode RGB 8 bit. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fine. Don't set that to grayscale because you lose colors. Background contents white. That's okay. So check if this is actually uh, measured 1920 for your canvas. Control Alt I to check. Dimensions would be 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. So that's fine. And this is going to be your primary canvas. I'd like to show you something. This is a photograph that we've taken using the Nikon camera. So this is what we're going to make use as a background for this HQ wallpaper. So again, you can make use of whatever background that you have. If, you, if you've if you taken a photograph using a Nikon or a Canon DSLR, then you got a very large file size for that. 16 to 8 megapixels would be ranging from 4,000 pixels. So that's going to be alright for an HQ wallpaper. So again, Control o to load this image. Control a Control c and go back to this project. Control v So to make sure that you're not targeting the wrong project, con uh, close that. So just leave this project right here. Okay, so that's going to be our base. Uh, let's set that a little bit like that okay and here layer one say base rename that to base and control J to duplicate or command control J to whatever PC you're using uh, base and you say this oh, sorry rename again say you overlay alright why we need a base and overlay because we wanna uh, create some glow effect here click on a base or highlight base then go to opacity right here set that down to uh, probably would say uh, 50% no I guess 75 there you go it got 75 right 75 80 uh, 75 will be enough 75% for the opacity on that part for the base then highlight overlay I mean bring it visible and on overlay this is where you're gonna be making uh, changes Click on E on your keyboard or bring up your eraser tool. I'm oh, sorry. Here. E for eraser. You got a hardness, set that down to zero. Size should be um, just check on the radius that you, you'd want to have. And escape that. And here, start erasing. Okay. So what you're trying to do here is to create a, a focused effect. Not on the background flower, but on the bee itself. You can make use of that as to whatever. Again, this is not default. You can make changes according to whatever photo you're trying to use. Hide the bee layer. See that it's just about like that. 
Okay, so bring up B layer again. You got a glow effect like this. See so what you want to do? We're actually done with that already. Uh, it's wallpaper, so you might want to include a watermark for that. If you'd want to share that or upload that to your blog site, and if you'd want to share that to somebody else, but you'd want to keep it watermarked and say that it's yours, you can type in your name, create a watermark with your name in there. But this time, you want to create a watermark with our uh, website's name. So, Control Plus on your keyboard, then find a target. So, we would want to target lower left side for the watermark. Then, uh, click on Text uh, Type, I mean, sorry, Horizontal Type Tool or T on your keyboard for a text tool. Then, um, click in there and say NoodleBoss.com. That's our website. Let me bring it down a little bit so that I can see how I would want to check on the Zeiss. I guess I'm going to use 72 for this. No, it's not enough. So you could say like uh, 120. It's not enough. I mean, sorry, it's over. Like just 100. Too much. I don't know. Right. Too much. Uh, 90. Probably 85. Yep, 85 would be just enough for that. So. Let it stay in there and again, text tool. We got another that we use. Uh, we're using Impact and Jennifer uh, handwriting for, uh, for the font type. Okay, so again, I can uh, control plus on your keyboard so you can make it a bit larger. Too large. Um, I guess this is going to be like uh, 40. I don't know. 38, probably. No. One second. Let me just adjust that. Uh, 35. Yep, 35 is going to be enough for this. Okay, and there you go. That's that's about it for the text. And um, I would want to ID this because this is how we have this on the website uh the dot com that we're using is actually orange but for the sake of making that a little bit different because it's contrast i mean it's blending on the background so you might want to make use of a blue color right there so it's new boss dot com and um we actually have this new to boss right here a little bit cracked so again let me make that a little fast for you so control J for this. Yeah, and if you'd want to save something that you you don't want to lose in the future, use control J. So you just revert back a little bit in there. And uh eraser tool again, set your eraser hardness to one hundred percent, one pixel for uh the handler, and just rasterize and just something like this. This is how we made that. Just don't target the blue one. Right, this is our watermark on the website, and let's see if it's gonna work. Yes, it is. All right, so it's done already. What you want to do is to give it a little bit of a of a shadow in there. So remove this, cause you're okay with that, and um, you have to merge those two layers in there. So click on Noodle Thinking, and then click on this layer. I mean Control. Or you could you could also do shift and control E to merge them, or you could right click and select merge. If you can't find merge in there, go to layer and go for merge layers. So again, control E to make them or link them up together as one image file. Then it's done in there. So what you do is again highlight that, go to layer, go to drop shadow. In there got shadow let's see yes we have shadow in there and uh, give it a 90 degree angle so you just have that in there make it a little bit strong for the spread and like this for uh, the glow all right and the glow or the shadow change that a little bit to a different color so it could match uh, the background like it's a little bit bluish or greenish. 
Okay, then bring it down a little bit, and it would look like that. So that will be your wallpaper. So Control S to save for the PSD. You can save the PSD file. You also save as here. Say HQ wallpaper. Then give it a name JPEG. So again, rename that. You say HQ wallpaper B B E E. Then a good practice to always remember when saving wallpaper, especially HD wallpapers like this. So you might want to include on the file name something that says 10 uh, 1920 by 1080. Why well, you'd want to do that because you want to remember just by looking at the file name that this is a large size that this is an HD wallpaper. Then save that. You can trim that down a little bit for the quality, but of course it's a wallpaper. It said the baseline standard large file should be maxed up to 12. Click on OK. And you got that. Again, you would want to create a secondary uh, sized wallpaper, which is 1280 by 720. Control Alt I. So you just type in, uh, that's the pixel dimension or image size. So resize that to 1280. Constrained proportion should be checked. Why? Because every time you key in something for the width, it's going to automatically si uh, resize the height together. Okay, so 1280 by 720 is the secondary measure for HD screens. Just check again, Control Alt I, that's 1280, and save file, save as. And you have HQ wallpaper, no, no, JPEG here, 1920. Oop, sorry, I forgot that. 1920, you say 1280, uh, 720. All right, so that's about it. Save again, should be maxed out for the quality. Now let's check on that. This is the original file, this is the HQ wallpaper, and this is the 720. How you want to make sure on that? Um, Go to computer and go to desktop. There you go. That's the measure. So did you check for the details? Click on that. It would say here dimensions 9, uh, 1920 by 1080. Size is 952. And the secondary one is 1280 by 720. All right. So if you want to have a look at that uh, fully, let me load it like this. Let me pause a little bit. There you go. It would look like that as a wallpaper. So you got a glow right here. You got a centralized effect pulling your eyes to look at the B itself. And for a 720, let me move that. This is going to be that. It's the same though. All right. So for more video tutorials, you can check out our website, www.newtoboss.com, and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash newtoworks. Again, my name is Ty. Thanks for watching. See you back.